folks, we're gonna do something different today. Uh, what better to do on a rainy day in the desert than um, fix some stuff. So here we are. We're gonna take this 400EX and we're gonna change out the uh, timing chain and we're gonna replace the, the base gasket and the head gasket because they, uh, when I put this motor together, I did the dumb thing and I put crappy gaskets on there and they leak like a sieve. And the timing chain is also a piece of crap and it's stretched. So we're going to fix that and we're gonna put this motor back together. And yeah, this thing will be for sale once I put it back together. And uh, there's the bottom plastics right there in perfect, perfect condition with a cool ass seat cover that I put together. Uh, yeah, there's the front plastics over here that are also bone stock in perfect, perfect condition. And uh, yeah, let's just get to town. Oh yeah, this is the dog. You guys remember this one that I built. Still going strong. We're gonna take it out, I think, this weekend and uh, rip her around. I still haven't got the graphics on it yet. They've been sitting there for a month. Uh, we'll get that. On to this dog. Yeah, this 400EX, uh, 2007 400EX. We are going to be replacing the base gasket right there, the head gasket right there, and we are going to be replacing the timing chain with a 450R timing chain, so super strength. Yeah. So what you want to do first is get down to the point where I am so you can continue on. Um, I should have recorded this, but I totally uh, just got to town and started working. Um, yeah, so you want to make sure that you get the exhaust off. Plastics off, of course, and uh, the gas tank off. Uh, I have the carburetor off because I was doing other things, but uh, yeah, you want to get down to this point. Also, remove your brake lever, get all that off, and um, get to this point, and we will get this top end tore all the way down to the piston. We're going to have to take the jug off and replace that bottom gasket down there, the base gasket, and uh, we're going to plane it up. Let's get started. Let's get this, uh, let's get this baby taken down and uh, get to town. So the first thing we're gonna do, you wanna remove this, and let's crack these bolts and get everything uh, under control. You wanna remove these in a crisscross pattern. So we'll just start cracking them. All right, now we got this guy. We're gonna have to get this guy out of there. All right, now we can finish these up the easy way. All right, now let's get these uh, valve adjuster caps off. The tap it adjuster caps. These are a 24 millimeter head, by the way. All right, now we're gonna put the motor into top dead center. All right, so in order to get this thing into top dead center, we're gonna have to pull a timing hole cap and we're gonna have to pull the crankshaft cap. So let's get those off. You don't wanna lose your O-ring. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna spin the motor counterclockwise until we line up the T in the window here. 
And yeah, let's get that done. <laughs> well, I guess I don't have to because we're already there. All right, and then what it should look like. There you go, you should have your T right in the window. And it's the T with the line above it. So it's a sideways T and then it's got a line above it. Just like so. All right, so in order to make sure that you're on the compression stroke in top dead center, you want to make sure that all the valves are loose. So check all the valves. Yes, 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 they're all loose. So if they're tight, which they uh, were the first time, then you need to go back around to top dead center one more full rotation until you get to the compression stroke, which makes them all loose. All right. All right, now we should be able to get that cover off of there. Let's give it a few taps and see what we got. All right, now we can just pop this baby on off. I said, now we can just pop this baby right on off. It doesn't want to come off with the bolts on it, so we're gonna have to pop these off. Fuck it. I was gonna to try to keep it nice, but they're not playing nice. All right, so that should make it easier now. Yeah, see those bolts just didn't like being in there, so. Well, we got a new head gasket, so we can toss this one away. All right, so the next step is gonna be, we're gonna have to remove the cam chain tensioner. And in order to do that, we're first gonna have to remove this uh, starter wire. So let's get that done. Then we're gonna remove the cap. All right, so we're gonna to have to retract it, hold it, and now we can crack these bolts. All right, so next we're gonna take the, the cam sprocket off and we are in top dead center right now. So you wanna be in top dead center, take the top bolt out, and then we're gonna rotate it to turn and we're gonna take the other bolt out. So let's get to it. Now we're gonna rotate the motor a turn and take the next bolt out. All right, now we can get the next bolt out. Alright, now normally what you would do is you'd prop the chain up here and you'd hold it up, but we're going to replace the timing chain, so it doesn't really matter what happens to it at this point, so we can just take it off and let her drop. Alright, now we're going to take the cam chain off. All right, like I said, you would prop your chain up here and tie it up, right, if you didn't want it. But we're gonna be replacing this chain so it can just drop. We really don't care what happens to it. You know what, just for shits and giggles, let's uh, keep it up here out of the way. Ah, if it falls, it falls. All right, so I decided to prop the chain up anyway to keep it out of the motor that way. It won't bind up when we're getting the rest of this stuff off and it may just go in there and get kinked up and we don't want that. So now I'm gonna take the uh, 
the cam set pins out. Be this guy, and then one over here. And then this guy. All right, folks, the next step is gonna be the cylinder head bolts, and it's gonna be one, two, three, and four. And we're gonna crank these babies off. I have the aftermarket ones, so yours may have end caps on there. But uh, still the same four bolts, though. Same four nuts. Let's get them off. <laughs> Did anybody catch that? Let's not get them off. Let's just uh, remove them. You want to remove these in uh, three different steps. So you want to you want to kind of just crack them all loose, and then we'll start taking them off, and then we'll uh, remove them all. Yeah, in case you can hear it in the background, this is a rare occasion. It's raining here in the Phoenix Desert. It just started raining. All right, now let's loosen them up a bit more. Now we just go ahead and remove them. But I'm going to do this the easy way. All right, so I'm going to use my impact to zip them on down real fast. Zip them on down. Nope. Zip them on off real fast. But I'm also going to use a magnet so that we don't lose them. So this one probably isn't a big deal. Or this one. See how good that works? That's what we're gonna do though. Especially on this one. You do not want to drop this one in the motor. And the washer. You definitely don't want to drop that in the motor. And this one has the thicker washer on it. And there we go, head bolts are off. Now I'm gonna have to wait for this rain to subside a little bit because it's getting kind of noisy. This is something I'm not used to that much here in the Arizona desert. Check that out. My cactus in the front yard is like, what's going on? What is this that falls from the sky? Is this water? <laughs> Woo! All right, all right. All right, all right, all right. All right, now the bolts are off, the head bolts are off. We should be able to just uh, lift this dog right on off of here. And let's get the chain out of the way and unhooked and get this baby up on off of here and one step closer. We only got one more thing we need to remove and then we can replace the base gasket and put this... Oh, we can't put it back together yet though. We got one more thing we're going to do as long as we are apart. We're going to uh, replace the timing chain. So we'll get on to the next steps of that. But let's get this uh, cylinder head up and off there. All right, now we can unhook our chain. And once again, it really doesn't matter what happens to our chain. If it falls in, it falls in, it doesn't matter because we're gonna replace it. There we go.
Let me get our gasket up off of here. Make sure you save the dowel pins. Now we can get our chain guide out of there. At least I thought we could. Still looks to be in pretty good shape. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, next we're gonna remove the cylinder studs. I mean the cylinder scouts. <laughs> Woo! I always get those two mixed up, stud and scout. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's just get these goddamn things out of there. We can get the cylinder up off of here. And uh, yeah, that'll be the last step of the top end here. And then we can move on to getting this timing chain out. And you wanna loosen these up in a crisscross pattern and in three different uh, steps. So let's just uh, start over here. All right, now they're all loose. We can just get them all out uh, the easy way. All right, now we got these last two bolts. Which were not very tight, and that's probably not good. Well, it's definitely good we're doing this because when I pulled the head, it definitely smelled burnt, so we definitely blew the head gasket. Uh, that's what you get for using cheap shit and now we have the brand new OEM stuff going on here, so we're not going to have that problem again. Yeah, let's get these off of there. All right, now we can just lift this dog right up on off of here. Oh, that wasn't good. That's not what I wanted to do. All right, folks, so our, uh, our base gasket was definitely leaking. Definitely was leaking, and this was a good idea to do this. Somebody's going to be very happy because this baby's for sale after I'm done with this. All right, folks, now, if you were just going to replace the, the base gaskets and the head gaskets and stuff like that, now you'd clean it up and you'd put your new gaskets on and we'd go to town. But we are also going to replace... The timing chain. We've got a brand new 450R timing chain that we're gonna put in here, a heavy duty dog. So we need to replay, we're gonna take this cover off. So let's get rid of this guy. We don't care if the chain falls in now, it doesn't matter. We didn't care before either, but we didn't want it to get bound up in there when we were taking the parts apart. So anyway, let's get this cover off. I already have a half the bolts out and uh, yeah, so all you got to do is just take all the bolts out. There's one here, 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 here. And your your oil uh, filter. And you have to have your oil drained for this. So we have no oil in here, obviously, because I've already had it apart. But anyway, let's get these bolts out. Get this cover off. Get the chain out.
All right, and then the oil filter cap. And get your oil lines off there. And then one bolt down here I got left. Now, we'll just pull this sucker right on off of there. You want to make sure it comes out of the reverse stopper down here if you have the 05 Plus. You got a reverse uh, pull, pull down here, so you want to get the off the seal down here. There we go. All right, folks. So the next step to get this timing chain off is we are going to have to remove everything, of course. The clutch and uh, the gears here. First step to do that is going to be to remove the clutch. So we're going to pull this off first. We're going to pull the pressure plate off first. And we are going to increment these out uh, in a crisscross pattern in a bunch of different steps so we don't warp it. So let's get her done. All right, now we can pull the pressure plate. You want to watch this bearing. It may fall out, so you don't want that to happen. And then we have our clutch lifter. All right, next we're going to have to get this nut off the clutch right here. And so we're going to have to unpin it first. So let's try to kick that dog on out of there. Well, that's not working. You know what? We're just going to buzz that sucker off with the impact and see what happens. There we go. We don't need to unpin shit. <laughs> this nut is a 27 millimeter, by the way. And now we have one washer that says outside. That one stays on the outside, obviously. And then we have another washer inside of here. We're going to leave them on there though and just pull the whole thing. Now we have a needle bearing inside of there also and then uh, this guy but we can leave this stuff on there. We're not going to be messing with anything deeper than this. Uh, now all we need to do, so we got to pull this in order to get the timing chain out. So let's get after it. All right, folks, as long as we're in here, we're gonna pull the screen and see what kind of junk we got in there and if we got any. So let's pull the screen, which is just a 10 millimeter bolt right here. Not super bad. Couple tiny little uh, pieces of, looks like the ring's just setting in and stuff like that. So nothing abnormal going on in here, I don't think. All right, folks, so now I've got all that cleaned up down there and I got this guy cleaned up, looking all beautiful. Let's go ahead and just put it back. And then we're going to put the, I mean, the bolt back in there, but we're going to blue Loctite it. All right. Got the threads all cleaned up. Let's get some blue Loctite on there. And then we'll just buzz it down real fast. And then we're going to torque it to 88 inch pounds. 88. All right, next we're gonna buzz off the uh, 
the primary gear and the oil pump gear nut. And um, these are on the 400EX, this is not reverse threads. These are normal, normal, regular right hand threads, just like the, just like here, not lefties. So let's buzz that off. 27 millimeter, just like the clutch nut. All right, and then we can take this gear off and we've got a washer on here too. Let's make sure we uh, get the washer. This gear says out, make sure of that. And then this gear won't come off. Well, it's because we got the oil pump gear that can come off. I forgot about that. <laughs> Let's get the oil pump gear off of there. And then this gear can come off. And it looks like we don't have to take the oil pump off. Or am I crazy? We're gonna find out in a second if I'm crazy or not. And then this gear comes off. And then voila. And we gotta get that out of the way. And there's our timing chain. I thought we had to take the oil pump off. But I guess not. So alright, we are ready to put on a new timing chain. All right, folks, now we're ready to put in our 450R timing chain, and this right here is the difference. This is the one that just came out, and this is the 450R timing chain, and you can just see that, you can see the difference right there. It's much, much, much thicker than the other one. So yeah, this is gonna be a good upgrade right here, and you wanna make sure you get the right one. Here is the part number, 14401-MEB-671, and this is the 112 link. You don't want the, the earlier one for the TRX 450R, that is 114 link. You want this one, the 112 link, make sure of that. It's the Borg Warner 112 link. And you can find it from the O2 Plus. So anything higher than a 2002 plus CRF 450R or the uh, 06 plus TRX 450Rs. So yeah, that's where you can get yourself the 450R timing chain upgrade and get her done like we're doing. All right, let's get that chain in there. Get this sucker back together. Fire it up. Fire it up. Let the engines roll. It's time to burn it down. <clears throat> So yeah, so if you're new here, make sure that you subscribe down there. Yep, and uh, crack that all, you know, get all notifi notifications from 11 Gallery ATV. Uh, we're going to be building stuff all the time on this channel. Um, yeah, so make sure that you subscribe and click the all and you get notified. You won't really be notified, but whenever you log into YouTube, you'll see, hey, 11 Gallery ATV posted a new video. Check it out. Woo! All right, folks. Get her done. All right, folks. Now we can drop this chain right on through here. Make sure we go behind the chain guide. And onto the gear. There we go. And then we get the timing chain onto the gear, slide the gear in, and then drop this over the top. So next we're going to put our all of our gears back on, and I kept them in the order that they go. So this gear is going to go on, and they have this little cutout right here, this little notch, and I believe it goes right there. See this little where this little uh, space is cut out on the on the on the splines that's where that goes and then this gear goes out and it has a a big uh opening right here and i believe it goes in the same spot 
and then the washer and the oil pump gear. And then this nut goes on there. And on the 400EX, these are regular right-handed threads. They're not left-handed like some other, other motors. Uh, these are just regular ass threads. We're just gonna snug it down a little bit. And then this will get torqued to 65 foot-pounds. All right, folks, now let's get our clutch back on there. And we left these on, but you have uh, the clutch outer guide that will go on. And then you got a needle bearing, which goes over the top of that. And then our clutch basket. You just want to line the gears up in there. There we go. And then we have a washer. Then we have the clutch inner. Then we have a washer. There's two washers here. So make sure you get this one on the outside because it says outside. And make sure this is facing outside because it says outside. <laughs> so there you go. This goes on the outside. And then we have the nut. And this is the nut with the, uh, the little the raised, uh, the raised sleeve looking thing on the outside of it. And then we're just gonna buzz it down a little bit. And this gets torqued to 80 foot pounds, but we're gonna torque this and we're going to torque this guy to 65 right now. All right, next we're gonna use our Motion Pro uh, clutch grabber here, and we're gonna slip that on. And I'm gonna use the two with the little, make sure you get two with these little notches, I think, because they look a little stronger. Because these have a little cut, right? These look more solid. So I'm gonna use these guys and just clamp her down. And then rest it down here. And then hopefully we can get this torque to 80 foot-pounds. All right, again, this is our 27 millimeter. See if we can't get this torque down. There we go, 80 foot pounds. We just pop those off. All right, now we're ready to throw the, the fibers in there. But first, let's get this uh, torque down too, as long as we're torquing. This gets torqued to 65 foot pounds. But in order for us to keep the, the motor from rotating, um, we're gonna go over to the other side here. This is what we're going to do. We got a breaker bar stuck in the other side uh, on the crank there, and it's going to, when I twist the other side, it's going to rotate up here and it's going to stick onto the foot peg and it won't allow it to turn any farther. So let's crank this baby down to 65 foot pounds and get her done. Sixty-five, and that's the easy way to do that. Let's move on. All right, now we can get our clutch fibers and our metals stacked up in there, and get the clutch plate back on, and get this clutch buttoned up. All right, so the way we're gonna do here is uh, we're gonna start out with a fiber, and then we're gonna go for a metal. And these are, like, one side of this is flat, and the other side is a tiny bit curved. It doesn't matter which way you put them. I just like to at least face them all the same direction. So if I start out with one with the curved side out, I'm going to put them all like that. There's really no evidence to, to support any of that. Uh, but anyway, that's the way I'm going to do it, because uniform, I feel, is uniform. That makes sense, right? Sure does. So, all right, so I'm gonna put them with the, the flat side in. All right, and then we got a fiber. Metal, and end with a fiber. Now, on your OEM one, your last, uh, your last fiber 
Listen, Metal, you stay there, sir. I didn't call your name. <laughs> the last fiber is going to be offset into the notch right here. There's a notch cut into the basket. And the last fiber is going to be offset right here, like so. This basket is aftermarket. doesn't have it. So, right there. And there we go. All right, and then we can get our clutch lifter in there. Boom. And you probably want to drop some oil on all these pieces if you're doing this for the first time, but this has already been assembled and already been ran, and everything already has a nice coating of oil on there, so that's why I'm not bothering to do any of that right now. But you probably should if it's brand new. Anyway, all right, we got our clutch lifter in there. And now you want to make sure your bearing is pressed in here. Yeah, our bearing is in there nice. And then these, this guy, the, the plate, just goes over the holes. Like so. All right, folks, now let's get our springs and our bolts put in there to secure that plate down. So yeah, I'm just gonna get them all started. Just wanna make sure that you get them uh, started by hand. I do, that way you don't cross thread them. Now I'm gonna buzz these down in a crisscross pattern in uh, two or three steps and just gonna snug them down with the impact um, just enough to get them tight and then we're gonna torque them to seven foot-pounds since these bolts are used we've already used them before this is like the third time being used now they are a one-time rated nine foot-pounds so if you have brand spanking new ones you can torque them to nine foot-pounds uh, after that if you reuse them again trust me when I tell you this if you try to torque them to nine you may snap them so I wouldn't take that risk and seven foot-pounds is plenty because the spring right here provides resistance which is what it's there for so it's kind of like a lock washer of some sort and uh, yeah so we're gonna go seven foot-pounds which translates to 84 inch pounds so let's get her done Now let's get these babies torqued down to 84 inch pounds. All right, so let's get these torqued up. I got my wrench back there uh, holding the motor so that it doesn't spin and let's get it done. 84, 84, 84, 84, and 84. Let's just give them all a once over to make sure Alright folks, now we can seal this dog up. First we're going to put a light coat of grease right along this surface. If we can get these out of the way. Get this to stay out of the way. No. Close enough. We're going to use our maximum waterproof grease and we're going to put a light coat around the, the whole outside of here. And we're gonna do the same to the outside of the, uh, the cover. And you definitely wanna make sure that you have this guy. It was stuck onto the, ga onto the cover. All right, now we got a brand new OEM gasket. It is uh, that part number right there. This is for the uh, 07, the 05 plus. This is for the 2005 and above with the reverse. So don't get this mixed up if you're on the 99 to 04 version. All right, and then we're just gonna lay this baby down here. I find the easiest way is to hook up the dowel pins first. That way uh, it's got something to hang on to. And you wanna get these lines out of the way. There you go. And there you go. And then we'll just stick that down on there. Since we got that grease, that's what the grease is really for. The grease doesn't do a whole lot except for uh, it's going to hold this gasket in place a little bit and 
it'll make it so you notice how clean it was when we took this apart, right? That's because I greased the gaskets on the way in the first time. And uh, there you go, then the gaskets come off beautiful. And technically I could have reused it, but they were shit gaskets. So these are the OEM, brand new from Honda. And we're not messing around with any of those shitty gaskets because that's why we're in this predicament in the first place. We're replacing this base gasket and the head gasket because they were pieces of crapola. So anyway, yeah, now we're ready to throw this cover on there. What you want to do with the cover is you want to make sure that the, the spring is through the hole, which it didn't go through. There it is. Make sure the spring goes through the hole so that it, it can catch. And then the way you want to do this, this is what I found. You want these teeth out of the way. So you want it all the way back here like so. And this is the exact position that you want the clutch lifter to be when you put it on. So you want to hold this arm and make sure that it stays just like this. And then when you slam the case on, then this guy in there will engage and it will flip like this and it will catch that. But you want to start it back out here like this. And you want to make sure that you hold it exactly where it is and you want to make sure that you hold it down so it doesn't lift up <laughs> it's a really a just a crappy ass maneuver but you got to do it all right here we go folks now with this one you want to make sure that you uh start it with the reverse stopper in the hole and you get this guy out of the way there exactly like that like that and that's exactly what we want perfect see how simple that was as long as you get this guy backed off just enough to get the teeth out of the way you're all set all right next before we put the bolts in we're gonna put the oil filter in and put the cover on and we'll put those two bolts in first so this thing calls for a K&N 113 that's the oil filter for a 400 EX and yeah let's get that new oil filter up in there the very first thing you're gonna need though is your spring and it just goes right in there and sits on the back back there and then our K&N 113 just goes right on back there now we can put the bolts and the cover on. And I have myself a diagram from when I built one before. Check it out. So this has all the bolt sizes and everything that you will need, right? So the cover are these two. There's 375 millimeters, or 175 millimeter and 270s. So the largest one is gonna be on the oil filter and the shortest one is gonna be on the oil filter, the 16 millimeters. Then we're going to all these little 28s go around the outside. A couple of 70s up here, a 50, 350s up there with the brackets. So yeah, there's the diagram. Let's get it done. So I already have them set. So this dog goes in here. And this dog goes in here. We're through the gasket, that's always a good sign. And then I also keep them so that they're uh, easier to, to know where they go because I kept these two in the bracket, so they belong in the bracket. And obviously you can figure out which way it goes because you want to read the writing. So it goes right here. I'm just gonna catch everything by hand to make sure that it starts. And then we have one more bracket for the reverse. It's gonna sit just like this. And it goes right down here into this little triangle cutout into the case. Then we have one more 50 along with these guys. It goes up here with them. And then we have a couple of 70s. And then all the leftovers are 28s. There we go. 
Then I'm just gonna zip them all down real fast into a just to get them snug. And then I can't find a Torx, oh, got one more. There really isn't a Torx spec for this, but uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and snug them all down to 84 inch pounds, which is seven foot pounds. So I'm just gonna go seven foot pounds. And that bird agrees with me because he is very happy at the moment. Now he's calling me a liar because he just shut up. <laughs> anyway, what you want to do is you want to hit these in a crisscross pattern. And uh, we'll start, I don't know, let's just start somewhere. How about we start up here? 84. Now we can put our oil lines on. And the oil lines each get a dowel and an O-ring. Actually, we'll put them on here. And they get a couple little eight millimeters. And these also get torqued to 84 inch pounds. 84. 84. All right, folks, now it's time to put our jug back on finally. And you want to make sure that your rings are back to where they belong. So we put the oil rail gap right here. That's the that's that center rail. And then we put the top oil rail here, the bottom oil rail over here, and then we have the top ring right here and then we have the second ring right here so we're gapped up 120 degrees at least apart so let's get this gasket down we got the OEM base gasket you can tell this is uh, definitely higher quality than the than the Chinese and the, and the aftermarket stuff because it's got the little the little rubber accents right in the gasket and everything so yeah let's get let's get this baby down We're gonna use some of the Maxima waterproof grease to uh, grease up this paper a little bit here. Not a ton, just enough to get it uh, a little coat on there so that helps with the sealing a little bit and it'll be easier to get off later if we need to do this again. All right, that should about cover it. What you're gonna do is basically match the holes up. So you got two holes over here, two holes over here, so it's gonna go on this direction. And we're gonna have to feed the timing chain through and the chiming chain guide through. So, what I'm going to do is go through here. We're going to go through the timing chain and just put it back up where it belongs. Through the guide, and then we want to go through the piston, around the piston. And you have two dowels. You have one here. And one here. All right, now we've got the gasket down. And the dowels. All right, folks, now we can get our jug up on there. And what you want to do is make sure that you have the O-ring on here.
and we're gonna feed the timing chain up through. And you wanna get your timing chain guide into the slot, there we go. And then we'll feed our piston up in. And we'll just compress the rings. There we go. And then we just keep on cruising down. And we try to line up the dowel pins. Boom. You want to make sure your timing chain is still around the sprocket down there. We don't want to lose that because that's uh, we're going to have to crack this back open again and we don't want to do that. So, all right. All right, now we're going to install the cylinder bolts. And what you want to do with these is you want to dip them in oil as you go. The threads here. So we'll just uh, get these dipped in the oil here. And then we're going to tighten these down in uh, three stages. First, we're just going to get them hand tight down to uh, get them started. And then we're going to All right, folks, now that we got these tightened down, we're going to torque them to 15 foot pounds. And then we're going to torque them to 32. So let's get to 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. And now we can go 32. Thirty two. Thirty two. Thirty two. And thirty two. All right, now that we got those torqued up, let's get these uh, last two down here. And they're, they're supposed to get torqued to nine foot pounds, but I don't have a torque wrench that'll fit inside of there because there's no way for you to get to the top of them. So I'm just going to. Eyeball this one to nine foot pounds myself. It's this guy and this guy. Feels like nine. Feels like nine. Feels like nine. All right, so we got those. Uh, all right, next let's get our uh, cam chain guide in there. And you want to take this little guy right here and put it towards the front like this. And then these little guys line up in the slot there. Now let's clean up this surface. And then let's get our dowel pins in. And they are gonna go one on this stud right here, and one on this stud right here. And now, we can drop the head on there. Well, not yet, we need to put the gasket down. <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves here. So next, let's put the head gasket down. And we got us our OEM head gasket right here. Here's your part number. All right, now we're gonna feed our timing chain through. And make sure this guide goes through. And this guide goes through. All 
All right, let's clip our chain back up. Make sure that we're still, uh, yeah, we're still riding on there good. All right, now let's get our head in there. No, the cylinder head. Woo! <laughs> I'll be here all day. All right, we're gonna have to hurry up because the bugs are coming out in full force. So let's get this timing chain fed through there and line it up and drop it down. Our timing guides are in there. Our chain's coming through. Boom. Boom, there it is. All right, dowel pins are in. And now, we got three washers that go here, regular size washers. One here. One here and one th here, but you definitely wanna make sure you don't drop that into the motor, because that would suck. And then we have one thick washer, and that one goes in the back. All right, and then I have aftermarket ones, but you may have these uh, cap nuts. You wanna put those on next, and we're gonna hand tighten all of these down. Then this one you wanna be really careful with, but you don't, uh, Drop that into the motor. All right. And then we're going to just hand tighten these down a couple of stages uh, in a crisscross pattern. And then we're going to torque them to 15 foot pounds. And then we're going to torque them to 32 foot pounds. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna put the, the cam chain over the top of the cam right here. And we're gonna rest it right down here for a second. Then we are going to take our sprocket and we're gonna rest it in there, just like so. And now we're gonna put our bearing on and it needs to have the, the uh, seal facing out. All right. And our lobes are, I forgot to mention, the lobes on our cam are all facing down. And that's with all these little, little, uh, little openings up. So see that this will be straight up and down. And we're at top dead center. And now, Whoa, 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 we missed by a mile. So we want to get the chain onto the sprocket and have the sprocket line up right about here. All right, right there is where we want it. And then we just slide that up on there. Boom. All right, folks, so right there is what you want. This line and this line are perpendicular with the cylinder head and this line is facing up. That means the cam lobes are facing down, this guy's out, and that's what we want. One 450R chain, hooked up. All right, now we got our cam lined up. We got our cam timed up. We're uh, perfectly matched up here. Let's get our bolts in there and get that sucker secured down. We're gonna be using the red 271 thread locker on these uh, cam bolts. And the process of this is this. Get some red Loctite on this guy. And then we're just gonna put the top one in. And then we're just gonna get it 
We're not going to tighten it all the way down. We're just going to get it just snug a little bit, just right on there, so that we can still move it on the other side if we have to. Now, we're going to turn the motor uh, one full turn so we bring the other bolt hole up. So let's spin the motor. Alright, now we can get some thread lock around the other bolt. And then we'll just snug it down to now we will rotate it back up and then torque it. All right, now we can torque this to 15 foot-pounds. Now we gotta torque this and we got a bar on the other side there that's gonna hold it on the foot peg. 15, and now we're gonna rotate the motor and we're gonna do that to the other side. All right, now let's get this one torqued up. Fifteen. And once again, we had the, the bar on the other side there holding it against the foot peg. So now we can rotate this back to top dead center on the compression stroke. All right, next we're gonna install our cam chain tensioner and it's gonna go right in here. And it's this guy. So we've already blue Loctited the, the bolts. And the way we're going to accomplish this is we're first gonna just get it in here. And then we're gonna reach, we're gonna retract it all the way. Keep it retracted. We're just gonna snug it down. Okay, then these bolts get torqued to 88 inch pounds. 88. And 88. Now we can retract it. Then you make sure your O-ring's in here, and then we put on the cap. There you go, and then just snug it down. Now we can drop in our dowel pins, and we have one here. Be careful you don't drop it in the motor. And one here. Now we can lay our gasket down, in case you were wondering. There's your part number for the OEM Cylinder head cover gasket. It's a metal gasket. All right, so we're just gonna line up our dowel pins. One there, one there. Gasket down. Don't need any oil or anything on this gasket. It's a metal gasket, so we just let it do its thing. Dry. And now we can uh, put some oil in there. Now what you wanna do is you wanna fill these pockets. So there's a pocket right here. and a pocket right here. And then we're gonna hit the bearings and the cam lobes and the cam chain. And the bearing on this side. And then the top of these guys. And then we're also gonna hit the, uh, the rocker, the rocker contacts and all that good stuff. Uh, and then we can drop our 
cylinder head cover down. Get her done. All right, now we just drop the cover on. And then we're gonna line up the dowel pins. I got us a little diagram here, like for the rest of the stuff. And this is all of the bolts that are gonna go into the cylinder head cover right here. Uh, yeah, so basically it's gonna face this way though. Just like that. And um, yeah, let's get these bolts in there. So we have 318 millimeters. One there, one there, one here. And of course we have one big dog that goes in the center. And then we have a 35 here, and a 35 here, and one here. Then we have two 65s, one here, and one here. 35 here, 35 here, 35 here, and then we have a 40 right here where the dowel pin is. You can't see it, but the dowel pin is right here, and that takes a 40. All right. Now we can just catch all these, make sure they all start. Now we'll get them a little bit tighter. Now we're gonna to torque this center one to 16 foot-pounds, and then we're gonna to torque the rest of them to nine foot-pounds, and that equals 108 inch-pounds. So let's get it done. 16. And we're gonna to torque these in a crisscross pattern. 108. 108. there we go and that's pretty much that now if you uh, need to adjust your valves you adjust your valves and um, yeah we're all buttoned up so let's get these caps on here and call it a day we got the motor done where we got the the base gaskets head gaskets replaced cylinder head cover gaskets replaced we got both side cover gaskets replaced we got the timing chain replaced with the 450R timing chain yeah so let's get these caps on and get it done. You want to make sure your uh, O-rings are on all of these, of course. And these do not need to be super tight, you just want to snug them down. That's plenty. See, I'm not even grabbing on the end of here, I'm just, uh, just enough for my wrist to grab them. And there you go. We are buttoned up.
Now, we can get to assembling all of the rest of this, but we're gonna, that's for another day. We got what we wanted accomplished, and uh, yeah, now you have a new timing chain and new gaskets. So, woo! Yes, you know what time it is. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Woo!